want some, but I guess we don't. I came over early this morning practicing on that song, and we ain't even saying it. Pray for me. <laughs> I believe I was teaching this morning. No, I can't. <laughs> no, I can't do that because there's a lot of voices involved. I, I, I just, I'm not that great at that. But anyway, God gave you a song, so I know he did. So you probably were singing all the time. Your song while we were singing ours, I hope you were. And I hope that you already sung this morning before you got here. I hope you woke up this morning with songs in your heart. Praise on your lips and all that. But I, I, I'm not going to keep you long. I, I don't have anything better to do today, but just where we're at right now. So, But I'm not going to infringe upon your privileges of having a great sunshiny day outside because the weather's getting right. They tell me it's going to be summertime soon. Well, praise God in hell. Let me, I hope this won't go out. I'm good. We're going we're gonna to preach today on something that you already know, and I know you already know. I don't even know why I'm preaching it because I'm preaching it, and you're going to be back there bored stiff saying, I already know that. I know you're going to say it. I realize that. But allow me just for a minute, if you would, turn to 1 Corinthians. I'm doing running like that. I just told those doctors I don't do no running. I done lied again. But anyway, they want to take that stress test and want me to run. I told them, man, I'm 71 years old. I ain't getting on about this bicycle. I ain't running. I don't run no more. I glide real slow. I said, so anything other than that, I'm already, my heart is already beating fast. I got to catch my breath right now. But in, in 1 Corinthians 13, and we, if you've been around church a while, you know 13 is what they call the, look at him. And so the reason I feel bad preaching it is because you already know it. And you know it so well, I feel like I'm really just beating a dead horse. But in 1 Corinthians 13, 1, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, I have not charity. I am become as sound and brass or tinkling sounds. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, I'm not charity. I am nothing. And though I be so all my goods, feed the poor, give my body to be burned, I have not charity. It profit me nothing. Mm. There was a whole lot of nothing in it. And we're not careful, we're living a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> but there is a substance to living. There is a power to life. 
And I know one of the worst things you could hear someone talk about in church is about love. Because somehow God set a standard that was so high that we don't even think we can achieve it. So what we've done, we've done secondary stuff and called it more God. But yet he says here, there's a lot of things that I could act out and do. It may look good to you, but God doesn't even see it. He don't even reward it. But I want to preach this morning for about five minutes. About five. I'll let you know what I'm preaching. I'm going to talk a while and I'm going to preach and then it's over. Some of y'all got happy. And some of y'all shaking head. No, he lying. All the talking we do behind the pulpit is not preaching. Some of it is just a lot of fodder to fertilize the ground we're walking in. It's not preaching. But I'm going to try to tell you when I start. Bear with me until then. Precious God, I'm so mindful, Lord, of your spirit here today. Baptize us all over again with mercy, truth, Love, God bring you peace. Let it be shared abroad in all our hearts today. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. You may be seated for a minute. You know, I think one of the most misused words in our vocabulary is a word called love. I can remember Maybe you can too. Remember falling in love for the first time? We called it that. I fell in love. The only thing about falling is when you get when you finally hit. <laughs> Sometimes that's crash and burn. But I know none of us here today is not real acquainted with that word. We've used it. Maybe we use it when we will have a good feeling. We called it love. I used to feel like the love doctor. People come to me, talk about love. I fix them up. Because I really believed I knew what love was. And then I fell in love one time. I mean, fell, drowned. And the worst thing happened was that I was in love, but they wasn't. And there is not a worse feeling in all of God's creation than to give love. That's not received. Nothing seemed to devastate us more than when we have given all we got under the subject of love and it's not received totally. But somehow, through time, I was able to get over that. <laughs> Didn't happen all at once, but I got over it. And it took a lot for me to get over that falling into something. I was bruised and scarred. Not only that, but everything after that was affected by what happened to me. Because love is about trust. And when you lose trust, you're going to lose love. They kind of go together like hand in glove. And so, kind of got over the idea about falling in love. When I got over it, then you know, I finally realized that what that was wasn't love. And then I 
finally realized what it was. Of course, then, you know, even that love didn't last forever because I got over that too. And somehow I feel like a lot of times we want to get over it. Especially if it's a bad experience, you don't want to linger on it. So, as we grow older together, love is either being expanded or it's being depleted. Because it's not hard to take advantage of time. You know, that's why, let me just say this, in marriage, it's not courtship. Sometimes people think flowers and candy is love. But a common time, a Valentine's ain't every day. I remember when my wife, you know, y'all putting pressure on her to get flowers and things. And I'm very economical. She said, honey, you ought to get, you never buy me no flowers, so we went to California. We happened to be out there in a the store. They had made a sterling silver rose. Now, if you want to be economical, buy one that never dies. I gave her that sterling silver rose as for her birthday, as for her Valentine's Day. And any other day that calls for a flower, all night she had to do is go take it out the refrigerator because I kept it up there so it would be cold at night. And she said, honey, see, here's what get me. She didn't want that because it lasts, it's everlasting. They don't want something that lasts forever. They need a re-up the next year. But I met the number. I said, baby, this is your flower forever. You ain't got to worry about it turning brown or nothing. But see, courtship was different. Remember when I first met her, we went to dinner every weekend. But when we got married, We ain't got to win no more now. All that's over. It's time to get settled in. And you need to go to the kitchen and learn. If you ain't learned how to cook, start cooking. See, there's a lot of things you're going to get in courtship that ain't going to be in marriage. Because most people think marriage is the end of all. And most of them think that marriage is, I got you now. So it's very easy for us to misinterpret or misinterpret that word love. That's why I use it very loosely. People say, well, do you love me? That's a loose word because your definition of love is different than mine. Mine is sterling silver flowers. <laughs> I know what y'all saying. Boy, I'm glad I didn't meet that nut. I know. I know. I'm not the number. So here we are. We get past. We get settled down. And everything we had in the beginning began to kind of ebb away. Things we done to win, we quit. Life began to take a whole new turn for us. And if we don't have a true definition of love, the first thing we're going to say, you know what happens? You want to say, 
I don't love them no more, and they ain't going to say they don't love me no more. And guess what happened? Everything about God is about growth. Don't fall, grow. Don't look to fall, but look to grow. You see, we're not the only one because it's, if you're not careful, you'll start loving what love bought instead of love itself. You're sort of embracing what came with it without embracing what it is. In the church of Ephesus in the book of Revelation, it talks about a church that had kind of got over it. They had first love was God in the beginning. Somehow they got over it. The Bible talks about they were still productive, but they had cooled off. He even said something about lukewarm. Wasn't hot. He said, I would that you either be hot or cold. But this mealy mouth, lukewarm stuff, I can't take it, he said. I'll spew you out my mouth. They were still productive. They were very gifted. They had all the things that most people desire to have. They were there. They were working, laboring, hard every day, trying to keep the gospel here, they said. They were still consistent. They weren't fainting. They was on what we say on the battlefield every day, making sure they were in the army of the Lord. But it came, became quite clear that God expected so much more. And you wonder how would God expect so much more in all that I'm doing right now? I'm being productive. I'm doing all these things. I got my gift. How can God say that I'm not productive. There's a lot of things that we can do, a lot of things that we ought to do, but the most important thing he tells us, he commands us, not ask. He never asked you what you think about it. He never had an opinion poll. He gave us a commandment, and he, a commandment from God is the word of God and he said, I tell you, I want you to do this what I command you. Yeah. I'm not sure how strong that commandment is. Is it, is it strong? Got to be, he said, because I ain't going to give you just two of them. And if you can do these two, you're going to please me in every way. The so first thing you're going to have to do is that you're going to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Uh-oh. It's what's bad is when we can't get the first one right. Because I'm going to give you a key to life now. Because if the first one ain't right, You'll never get the second one right. So I, I need to go off of what he told me. Command me, love me with all your heart. Would you believe it if I told you today in myself and in yourself that's totally impossible? If I told you that you would need help to do the first one, then you understand that you're going to need help to do the second one. Yeah. And so most people try to work from the second to get to the first. And God says you got to do the first to get to the second. Yeah. You'll never love your neighbor like you love yourself until you know how to love God. 
And so we don't have the revelation of his love for us. And so without the revelation of his love for you, you don't have a revelation of how to love your neighbor. Because he said you must love God, love your neighbor as you. Well, look here. Y'all know, don't get me wrong. I have not arrived. Uh, I'm going to be honest about it. I have not arrived. I am still learning some things in life. I ain't going to stand here today. I know some of you was trying to scoot on your chair already. Uh-uh. I know he got me already. I'm not trying to paint you in no corner. <laughs> I'm already in the corner. But I'm learning how to come out the corner. Because nothing's going to work in God without us doing what God said. If I didn't have but two scriptures, two things in the Bible that I want to have today, two scriptures I know will keep me safe. Two of them. Because he said on these two, it's going to hang everything else. You're going to talk about it. If you ain't got these two, you really don't have nothing. God does not give me an exception to the rule. He does not change the rule even for me. Sometimes he warned them in the in church of Ephesus. He said, look here. All you've been through and all you're doing, you still need restoration. And you will think seeing them being so efficient in all that they were doing. We would have been appalling them, and yet God is saying, look here, you need restoration. You have dared so far from where I told you to start. He said, you have neglected, you have forgotten your, your first love. Do you think it's possible that we could be in God for 50 years and forget the God that loved us in the beginning? Do you know how easy it is to take God for granted? Do you know how easy it is to all of a sudden, you've been around for so long, you know, the love of God is not the most important thing in your life? Do you realize how easy it is to get busy for you and not be busy in God? Do you realize Everything that you put Jesus' name on don't have Jesus' name on it. Do how we realize speaking in tongues does not take the place of the love of God. I remember Sigmund Freud was a philosopher. He said love is the first step towards mental health. Because people that don't know how to love right won't be able to think right. You say you're crazy? You probably are. You got a love problem. You say you ain't got no sense at all? You got a love problem. Because people that don't understand love will have all kind of mental issues. We have a whole lot of people today that have a whole lot of Mental issues that was birthed from a lack of love. We have abused kids. We got all kind of things in this world that people are messed up because of love. We got neglected people in this world. Crazy because nobody cares. But the first step, the first requirement for mental health is love, knowing that you have been accepted. And as long as you're in God, this is one thing you need to understand. You have been accepted in the beloved. You need to know that you have already been accepted. Otherwise, you're going to feel like a stepchild. You're going to feel like you've been alienated. You're going to feel like... God don't love me. 
the first step in having a sound mind in God is knowing that God loves you. Don't gauge God by somebody else. Don't gauge them by what they think about you. You got to know this for your own personal self. God truly loves me. See, I used to think he'd get up in the morning and have coffee with me because he liked me that Maybe I'm just a fool. But I, I believe he loves me. I be telling, man, I don't know what you see in this bald head man here, but you sure act like you love me. And I'm so happy to know that God loves me. You know, I don't know how you feel about that. That's on you, but I know what I feel about. I'm not trying to get accepted. I've already been accepted. Not trying to get love because I'm already beloved. I'm not trying to do anything but allow God to become my beloved. I'm not trying to find new love. I've already found the love. And I'm going to tell you what's so bad about the love of God. Just when you think you understand it. It gets a whole lot greater than that. There's so much of him to understand when it comes to this love thing is that we have put our love in the dictionary, but you'll never put his in it. Because his love cannot be defined in Webster. His love would never make sense to saying none. You cannot have an understanding of his love like that. You would never get a definite word. You can say that and say, God love is this. No, God is love and love is. And when you start unraveling and all this, you're going to find out that's, that's a whole lot of God. And if it's a whole lot of God, there's got to be a whole lot of. There you go. This is not a test. You don't have to pass them, but you will. Them. <laughs> See, I get to church. Wasn't the highest goal. It wasn't about how many people are gonna speak in tongues and how many people are gonna give away. But a church, the highest goal of any church is not to have the greatest programs. If programs would save people, if programs would heal people then we need to get the best program there is. But how many people have been to program, felt good, because the music was right, but you left still undone? So programs weren't what God died for. He didn't want to see who had the most gifted church. But he, what he wanted to see is that if we had any type of indictment from God let it be that it was a church of love by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples is it going to be because I spoke in tongues two hours a day no is it because I prayed five hours a day no is it because I was so gifted I walked on water. No. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. How will they know? They're going to know the love they see you have towards one another. I know we want to, we want to say, well, no, I know that's true, but ain't no buts in this. We're trying to wear crosses to make people think we say. I wouldn't care if your cross on your neck, you paid $10 million for it. It ain't got nothing to do with Christ. It do not get you in the closer to heaven. And that's not what Jesus died for. That is not what he called us for. But he did call you to, to this commandment. It did call you to be a vessel of love. What? Oh, man, I don't like to preach that. That love, love, stuff. That's so, I used to hate that message. 
I hated that message because it, it, if it is love, love like that, it means it's got to love everybody. Uh-oh. I ain't looking. Because if I preach love like love is in the Bible, then that means that God's got to love everybody. And there are some people, I think, I met people that I felt like they don't really deserve that. You? No? Just me? Yeah, okay. I met a lot of people since I've been in church. I would say they don't deserve the love of God. Then all of a sudden I get back over here in his word and he's telling me that my, my suits ain't going to tell the people that I'm saved. Then he gets up and tells me that even if I speak in tongues, it ain't going to say I'm saved. He's going to get over here and tell me that all this stuff I'm doing, that's not what's going to save me. Not only is it not going to save me, but it's not going to even identify him. And you would think that he would be in the midst of all that. And yet he came to the church of Bethlehem and said, I have somewhat against you. I'm not against you speaking in tongues. I'm not against you having guilt, but I am somewhat against you because you're trying to do all this stuff. And the one thing you haven't done, you haven't returned back to me. You have left your first love. Oh, glory. So Paul came to set things in order. Because there are those who's going to brag about their spirituality. They're going to brag about their ministry. There's never been a time, it's almost like now, you're not a minister unless it's a specialized ministry. God called me to pray for kneecaps. So you go looking for kneecaps. So now God prayed, called me to do something different. He called me to, he called me to wash dishes in the dining hall. I'm glad of that. You could have got that call from me. You feel me? But we got specialized ministry in which really takes away from the love of God because really there is no real such thing in this Bible. I'm not talking about what we have created, but there's no such thing in this Bible as specialized ministry. That wasn't a different word to the man. That wasn't a different word to the woman. Because this Bible said, when you pray, when you give, no specialize in that. You ain't going to believe this, but the same anointing he poured on one, He poured on us all. You know what that nun was called? Holy Ghost. There's nothing going on in anybody's life by the Holy Ghost that can't go on in your life. You know what God needs to bring our attention to is that whatever is needed at the moment, you have it. Every one of us have been anointed to lay hands on the sick. Oh, I, I need anointing. Do you have the Holy Ghost? Do you claim the Holy Ghost? If you claim the Holy Ghost, then you got the power of Jesus in your life. And you're not going to believe what you can do in Jesus' name when the Holy Ghost is in your life. You can speak to mountains. You can speak to sickness. You can speak to all kinds of things. Why? Because of what's in your life. And you know what don't, you know what get us? Is that this stuff don't work because you know it. 
You can get a head knowledge without a heart experience. It don't work. But oh, if you ever get in the Holy Ghost and let it start working from the Holy Ghost, don't let people meet you. Let them meet the Jesus in you. When you start allowing Jesus to come forth out of you, you'll be amazed at how it changes people. We have spent too much time arguing and fighting in the flesh and hoping to get a spiritual result. It don't happen like that. It's not going to happen like that. You're going to let your flesh be at rest so God can rise. God can do more in a second than you'll do in 50 years. You'll be amazed at what the Holy Ghost can do when we release the Holy Ghost and not us. We don't have the power. We don't even have the power to love God like you want to be loved. Without the help of God, you would never, ever love God like that. You'll never love your neighbor like you love yourself. You can't do it like that. You want to be preserved. You believe in your own strength. You believe that you have a right to determine on how and when you do what you do. God, it's not like that, my friend. Mm -mm. Your, your badge of spirituality is not based upon whether you was the great, the biggest giver. I know. I've seen people put on all kinds of shows, but that's not your badge that they wanted you to wear. You see, we're not the kind of people that don't keep tabs and records. Remember? Remember when I you remember when I bought that hamburger for you? We'll quickly remind you of that. You remember when I gave you that? That ain't love. Love don't keep records. But we got records, man. We got data. We got input. We got things. We, we got diaries where we uh, wrote down. You know, remember when we went on that vacation and I bought the dinners? Nobody seemed to understand that the real love of God is always given without ever expecting anything in return. But that's not us. We want to keep track, records, so when we get the opportunity, and don't let someone make it out of the group that you didn't help out getting peanut butter sandwiches, or you're going to be the first one there to tell them, man, you remember... You remember when you was hungry and I gave you a peanut butter sandwich? You know, Jesus has something to talk about. Maybe you was giving a peanut butter sandwich to Jesus and didn't realize. Because I heard him say in one place, he said that when you have done this unto the least of them, my brother, you have done it. Boy, if we, un if we only knew where Jesus was, it, can you imagine what we'd be doing right now if we understood where Jesus really is residing right now? Because a lot of times we walk past him. They, they walk past him. When did we see you hungry? When did we see you? And he said, look, when you have done it unto them, you have done it unto me. How many blessings have we missed in our life? Because when we seen Jesus, he didn't look like Jesus. He, we didn't see Jesus being that one that was exacted from us so he can give us more. Planting seeds. So that when time for your harvest comes, there's something to harvest. And there are times when God is bought these things to us, and we have to make a decision. That ain't Jesus. How many of us really have ever seen him? And if he showed up, would you recognize? Because we want him to come back on a white horse. Not recognizing that every day you wake up, you're going to see a part of him somewhere. Because he's all in this place, all in your place, in every place else you go. Because in him we live and have our beings. So you're not going to get away from him. He's going to always be there. And then you wonder, well, Lord, where are you? Where have you been? Look around you sometimes and realize that what God brought you was him. Oh, bro, wasn't. 
But here we go. See, if you, if you give your body to be burned, I mean, give your body to be burned, and if you didn't do it in love, guess what? I hear people all the time say, boy, I'm making a sacrifice with God. You can't make that sacrifice so you know what the sacrifice has been made for you. Because most house sacrifice doesn't cost us too much. But when we recognize his sacrifice, it costs him every. We make a sacrifice, it ain't going to cost us everything. We may make sacrifices, but it ain't going to cost us everything. And so we still need to get a good look at what everything looks like. Yeah. We're not going to have those type of personal sacrifices. So since I know I can't give up everything like that, I better connect to the one that could so he can teach me how to. This ain't something I'm going to learn on my own. I don't have that in me, and nor do you. And you can sit here and tell me how holy and spiritual you are, but I can tell you right now, if God came down right now and told you, hey, man, and you tell him, get run down your pedigree. Lord, you know, I went to Sunday school every day. I went to church every day. I did all this every day. And he's going to tell you what he told him, a rich young ruler. You done well. But one thing, can you imagine that God getting caught up on the one thing that you lack? He's always on that one stuff. 99 sheep ain't but one lost. You would think 99 out of 100 Sound like good stuff to me. If I went out and lost just one dollar out of a hundred dollars, I'd be glad. I'd keep up with the 99. I ain't going looking for that dollar. Uh-uh, that ain't me. Oh, Mr. Dollar, oh, man. <laughs> Forget that. I'm going to go on and take care of business. But here at God, he is concerned about the one little thing that we ain't concerned about. Long we got 99, we cool. And we'll be bragging about, boy, look at what all I got. And here God is. He, you think he's looking at your 99, he's just looking at the one thing that's not. He said, one thing I like is, well, well, well I thought I was doing good. How many times have you patted yourself on the back, broke your arm off trying to get it done, patting yourself on the back because you looked across the aisle and said, you know what, at least... I'm better. I know, I, I know y'all think like that. That's just me. Every now and then we have to get home. You have, you have seen people that's worse than you, right? No? You ain't seen nobody worse than you? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, truth is powerful. <laughs> it's powerful. You know what I'm saying? Because, see, if you don't tell the truth, you're going to live a lie. And God don't like liars. So I, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Brother Wilson, it makes me feel good when I see somebody is worse off than me. It makes me feel bad about me. At least I can say to myself, huh, I may not be no good, but they way past no good. And as long as I can see them before me, I ain't got to see God, because then I'm going to tell God, see, look over there. He worse than me. Like God is looking over there. He's looking right here. And me trying to gauge myself by them has nothing to do with me and God. 
Because he has a word that says, to when, when much is given, much is required. Quit basing your spirituality on somebody else. And some people are trying to get what God never wanted them to have, put pressure on themselves to get it, and then they don't have grace for that. But if God calls you to it, that means God's going to equip you with the grace and mercy to do that. He said, I know many people want to die for a call. Many people even talk about, boy, I'll die for Jesus. He ain't asked you to die like that. You ain't going to believe this. He don't want you to die for him. He wants you to live in him. He said, come that I might give you life and that life more abundantly. Now, we thought it said, come and die for me so I can make your death more abundant. No, that's why most people live in dead lives and li living lives. He came that you might have life, and that lies more abundantly. If anybody in the world ought to be happy and joyous, it's got to be people that call themselves Christian. We should never, ever fall under that umbrella of complaining about everything that come down the pike, crying and worried and all that. God didn't give you the spirit of fear. But he gave you a spirit of, he, he, he didn't give you love, did he? He didn't give you that? He, did he give love to us? He, he gave it to us. For real. That's why I think more like him. I'm thinking of whatever he gives me in love is eternal. That's why, bro, give him metal flowers. Don't mess with that stuff, Pete. That's it. That's some devil flowers dried up and down in a day after spending fifty dollars on them. Can't even make soup out of it. You know, I, I just got an idea while I was up here just now. I just thought about this. Well, Valentine's gone. But well, next year, you ought to give them collard greens. You know they come in bunches. At least when they're dead, you can do something with them. You can't do it with them roses. Tulip. We need, we, we need to change some things. We need to start changing some things. Instead of you going after for flowers, tell them bring collard greens. Then you sit there, not only do she get to hold them, but you get to enjoy them after. Oh, bless the Lord all my soul. Let me get ready to quit. I'm getting ready to preach now. Time. Give. He said, without love. He said, make it very simple. He said, tell yourself, I'm nothing. If I got a gift, don't have love, I'm nothing. If I sacrifice, give my body to be burned without love, I gain nothing, just a charred body. Do you know what nothing plus nothing equals? A lot of us are living nothing. We got nothing on our sacrifice, nothing on our giving, nothing on our giftings, and nothing plus nothing is nothing. Here's how the Apostle Paul goes on to declare the power of love. Every time I read this, there's always one to jump out at me all the time. Charity suffers long. Yeah. That, that, I even hear fans running down. I didn't even know we had. 
I said, instead of the word charity, I'm going to use the word love because you're more acquainted with that word. He said, love suffers a long time. Mm. Took God almost 4,000 years to get here to really express his love. We don't even live. We got three scores and ten by reading the strength. A couple more. Took God 4,000 years to finally get a chance to really express his love like he wanted to. Is that something? You come in the world still dripping wet and all of a sudden you got the handle on everything. He said it suffers long. Do you know how long God looked down through time and seen everything man wasn't getting better? The more they grew, the worse they got. I'm sure he sat there many days shaking his head. I can't wait. I can't wait to get down there so that I can show them love. But it suffered a long time. He had watched it a long time. The Bible says love. Love is kind. Love in this not jealousy. Have you ever heard that word? Because we don't even, we ain't never like that. Right? Okay. This is when you're not sure. You say yes and no. But love ain't jealous. Because if it's jealousy involved, it ain't the love of God. It don't brag. It's not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. It's not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Man, I've got to get baptized all over again. <laughs> now I think I'm going to get baptized all over again. When I read it slow, boy, it seems like he's talking to me. He said, rejoice is not in iniquity, but rejoice in truth. Beareth all things. That means kept in silence. That's not us here. The love we got can't wait to tell somebody how hurt we are, right? We want to let everybody know what we're going through. He said, but Real love beareth all things. Just keep silent. Let love work. <laughs> Believeth all things. Hopeth all things. Endureth all things. That was love. Believe all things. Endure all things. I know. If God could do something for us today, my prayers would be God restore us to our first love. Because yes. yes. without this first love experience, there is nothing you ever going to do to please God. See, I finally realized how come most of us today in America, we're powerless because love don't seem like power. If love seemed like anything, it seemed like the most weakest link in our chain. There are more people guarded against love than anything else. Man, I'm scared of getting in love because I may get hurt. You ain't in love with the wrong one because if I fall, grow, in love with Jesus, he's never going to hurt me. And if he do, he's going to heal. 
if it feels like it hurt me, wounded me, or scarred me, he got sad for me. And he will heal you. There is nothing like being welcomed and embraced by the love of God. Come on, we're getting ready to let I'm getting ready to let you go. I said five minutes, then I, I almost forgot. Let me, let me say this here. Everything God required in this 13th chapter is very hard pill to swallow. And I don't believe you can even swallow it without what? It's so hard. But I do believe that if he put it in here, it's possible. I don't think God would have wasted all this energy to get it in there and get it into your hearing that he didn't, he wasn't serious about it. Come on, let's stand. I'm gonna, we're going to pray. I'm going to let you go. I, Because <laughs> in that same chapter, Paul was talking about, he said, when I was a child, you know what I done? There's a lot of childish things. You know what a child does? You, we, we've all had kids. Most of us in there have kids. And I'm going to tell you what, that's a real challenge in itself because ain't nothing like kids. Is that if you don't get their head screwed on straight early, man, you mess, they messed up a life. Because they always believe from the time they come out, they believe that everything's supposed to be instantaneous. They don't get it. It's sort of whining and crying. And then I, you know, I had, I had some. They couldn't just go to bed. You put them in their bed, they whine and cry. Ah! Ah! See, my wife, being the mother she is, she was very on the, on the job. And I, and one time, I hate to say it, Sarah, it was you, but she got to crying. She got to crying so much. And see, my wife was spent about two hours just, just clean up with Q-tips and things. And then she will take, bathe her down real good, got all clean, smelling like that baby powder stuff, put her in the bed, and she was sort of hollering and crying. And my wife, it just get on her nerves. She said, honey, I got to go in there and, and, and get her pick up. I said, no, no, no. I said, what is she crying for? My wife started crying. I done bathed her. I done fed her. I done cleaned her up. She crying. I don't know what's wrong with her. I said, don't worry about it. There comes a time, let them cry till they get tired. They'll get over it. I said, leave her in there. And when she realized that you're not coming, she's going to stop and go to bed, go to sleep. That just sounds so cold. No, it's not. Because I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of y'all still crying right now wondering why God ain't showed up because it's time to put away that childish stuff. Don't try to cry and get your way with God because it ain't going to work. She didn't know why she was crying. She was, my, my wife thought she was going to lose her mind. I'm, I'm trying to be the best mom I can be. When you done done all you can do, that's all you can do. And that's the same thing like God going to tell you. I done done all that I can do. And you see a crime. Ain't nothing else I can do to keep you from crying. Because he came to wipe away tears. And you are still crying like a child. It's time to grow up. Said so when I became a man, I put away childish things. Quit, put, quit being like I got to have it now. I don't believe you love me because you ain't. Look, that's childish stuff. I never was held hostage by my kids. I didn't have a problem saying no. And I didn't bargain with that. I didn't compromise with that. You can ask them when they're alone. They'll tell you the same thing. I didn't, I didn't compromise. When I said no, you didn't worry about it. They knew it was no. 
We have another plan. Because some people throw tantrum when God says no. If they slam the door in my house, they better put their finger between that and the, and the frame to make sure I don't hear it. Oh, y'all, I know. I know. Y'all think I'm a bad father. I don't care what you think right now. I'm just saying right now, I never, in my household, there were two grown people. Two. And when you did get old enough where you felt you were grown, it wasn't going to be for two grown folks in the house. You know what time that was? When you get grown and tell me how you want to do your own thing, you're grown. And I want to introduce you to where you can do your own thing because it ain't going to be in my castle. I don't share the throne in my house. I don't compromise even with my kids. We got to stop all that crazy stuff. We got kids out here don't know how to obey anybody. It's stupid. You're not showing them love by letting them have their way. If you're grown, be grown. I got off the subject. I'm getting ready to close it. I forgot. Mm. There's so much I got to say about this, but I got to let you go. But I do want you to remember one thing. I know you said, boy, that's so elementary. What are you saying today? I already know about love. I wrote a book on it. Did anybody buy it? I bet you didn't buy it yourself, did you? <laughs> you couldn't even buy it. So scrap that book you wrote. But I, I am concerned. Because I think that if we're ever going to get balanced in God and balanced in the body of Christ is that we've got to learn how he describes things versus how we see things. There's somewhere along the lines that we've got to get back to our first love. I want to pray for us right now before we leave. Precious God, I do thank you for your word that's so powerful and enriching. I pray today, dear God, among us, even myself, God, don't let me forget about the first love. Don't let me forget about embracing that love that you first gave me that was so pure and untainted by thoughts and imaginations. Lord, I pray right now that you would endow us with the power of your Holy Ghost that we might be able to do all that you have commanded us to do. We ask that today, dear God, melt away our fears because in love there is no fear. And I pray today that God, that you would just baptize us all over again until all our fears will fade. In the name of Jesus today, I thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. God bless you. I, I hate that I, I, I lied to you about the five minutes.